All right, so today we have Pat from Change of Heart Franciscan Volunteer Program. Uh, we are excited to have her join us. So we are going to ask her some questions um, and she's gonna share a little bit more about her organization. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the questions up here. So um, to get started, uh, the first question, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your role within the organization? Uh, as Kelsey said, thank you and, and uh, welcome to anyone who's listening to this, especially to the students. Uh, my name is Pat Moran and I am a Pittsburgh native. I've lived and worked here for all of my life except for about eight years I lived in West Virginia. My background is predominantly in education and in the arts. Um, I was an art, art educator, creative director uh, for many years. I worked in Certainly, my last 25 years, I've been working with nonprofits. Um, and in particular, I worked for Point Park University for a while as an outreach director. So um, I landed this job with the Sisters of St. Francis of the Newman communities that have a ministry here in Pittsburgh that have been here for over 100 years. Um, and this is called Change of Heart. And because the sisters are aging out, um, they decided to have a ministry where they can invite young adults into Pittsburgh to keep their, their mission alive of serving the most poor and vulnerable. So I have been working with the Change of Heart Franciscan Volunteer Program for seven years. And it's been a great experience for me to work with young adults. Our program reaches out to ages 21 to 30. So predominantly, we do go into camp colleges and universities and look for young adults that have a heart for service and that want to do an 11 month service experience in Pittsburgh. Great, that's awesome. So what do you find that employees like most about your organization? And you can even share what you like most about working there. Well, <clears throat> it's easier for me to say what I like most. What I like most about it is working with young adults I find them uh, to be very open, to be very honest, and I find the young adults that come into our program really care about our country, they care about the world, they care about their neighbors, their families, and there are people that, you know, when you're in your 20s, you just have, um, you great, have a great outlook for life and living, they share that with me. Um, I get excited to, to be with them and, and they teach me something constantly. Um, what they like about our program is that we partner with 42 nonprofits in the city because we've been around for 21 years as a ministry. And so many of our nonprofits, um, they like the people that we provide them. Um, they have been upstanding people, people um, that are very bright, that are very caring, very empathetic and sympathetic for the poor. Um, and we give our volunteers the option to choose the nonprofit they want to serve with based on their skills and their interests and also the population they wanna serve. So it's very open-ended. Our website has a list of all the nonprofits that we partner with and we have nonprofits that come to us every year that want to partner with us because they've, you know, others have, you know, the word has gotten around the city. It's a small city that we provide quality candidates to them, very professional young adults who, you know, are very flexible. And as you know, in nonprofits, you have to wear many hats. So they're very open to doing that. And so I think they like that about our young adults. That's great. Um, what do you think then makes your organization different from others of its kind? Well, I think we are a faith-based organization um, and we look for young adults that are Christian. They don't necessarily have to be Catholic, but a belief in God because we really believe that there, there is a link between serving the poor and God um, you know, we are Franciscan and St. Francis of Assisi, um, he has a reputation from his life of serving the lepers and the poor in the little, little town of Assisi in the Middle Ages. And so we take that charism on to be people of service. Um, 
and our young adults, you know, they, they learn about St. Francis. They come because it is, you know, we take on the charism of being Franciscan, and, and that means just living simply uh, for that year, you know, living off based on what you need versus what you want, because as we know, we are a country that we have a lot of things. And, you know, we're very, very materialistic. And so it's really a year to put that aside, to just take on, um, just, you know, just kind of let go of a lot of things and concentrate on serving and concentrate on um, who you are spiritually, um, you know, and your relationship with God. We develop that. We have six retreats a year. And, you know, we... You know, we, we really work with our young adults and help them to identify their relationship with God and what does that mean for them as they journey in, in this year and what does it mean for them as they go on into living their life. That's great. Um, so what is something that most people don't know or would be surprised to learn about your organization? Well, our ministry comes from a, a sister organi organization that's been around in Pittsburgh for 125 years. And um, we do recruit from around the country. We do have overseas candidates at times. And what I try to bring together is a real eclectic group of young adults. You now, you would think that the people that we attract are all the same. They're very similar, but that's not true. For example, this year we have five young adults and I have a young woman who, who came to us from Vietnam, who came to the country prior to her um, going to college. Uh, she went to the University of Texas. And so um, we have also a young woman who's first generation college and her parents are from Poland. So that culture, you know, that background, uh, how she worships, how she serves, how she lives her day. Uh, we have an, another young man from New Jersey whose parents are American Indian. So he comes from that culture. So we really try to bring a very diverse, very diverse group of people together. While living community is very challenging, you know, that eclectic, that being that eclectic and that different really brings them together and they can really share a very rich culture with each other. And what we really focus on is, you know, look at the things that have brought you together that are similar more than the things that are different. Let the differences be beautiful and be something that you can learn from. And they really do. You know, what I, the beauty of the program is that I see them when they come at the beginning and I'm with them and I walk this journey with them for 11 months. And I, I, I love how they grow for that whole year and what, you know, they're, they're more of who they're supposed to be at the end of the 11 months, you know, and many of them change their focus in their life. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people who've changed their career paths based on their ministry. Many of them get into ministry and they stay in nonprofit work. That's great. Um, so what is something when you are, meeting with um, students or any individuals that are interested in these positions, what is something that you look for on their application or in a resume or cover letter or whatever you use to evaluate if they would be a good fit? That's a great, great question, Kelsey. Um, what I do look, and when I, when I see the students, I ask them, have, you know, what kind of volunteer experience do you have? What, what did you do while you were in college? Um, did you go on spring breaks to, to places where your, your campus, maybe they were going to do some rebuilding in West Virginia or, you know, go, going to a third world country for a while? You know, what have you done on campus uh, to reach, reach out, either tutoring, you know, people that needed it? You know, what type of, are you a person that goes outside of yourself to help the other? And we do look for those kinds of students who, you know, it's not the first time. You know, we have people that come into our program for various reasons. And sometimes it's they don't want to go into their master's program or into the workforce right now. They maybe just need a year to decompress, which is fine. But I still look for the person that has the service art. Okay. You know, someone that recognizes the importance of giving and the importance of serving our brothers and sisters in the world, um, that they do have, 
you know, and sometimes they come um, and they have, you know, done service work in their churches in the summers, or mm-hmm. they've done summer camps, or, you know, those types of things, um, that it's not all about just them, you know, that it's not all focused on there, on themselves, but, you know, what are they doing, you know, who are they living with while they're in school, and what do they do, maybe they're in a, um, you know, in some kind, of, what kind of groups are you, are you in during school? Are you in sororities, fraternities? You know, because uh, I know a lot of them are very service oriented. Yeah. And what have you done during during those times? You know, it's important that I know. You know, tell me a little bit about you know what you do that's outside of yourself. Okay, that's great. So, kind of jumping off of that, then, um, is there some type of interview component or meeting these applicants in person? Um, I would assume so. Correct. Okay. So, what what do you or is there? I guess you can answer that first. Yes. Here's, we do have an application on our website. Okay. And it's very, very short. They go on and they put either post their resume, they post information, their phone number, their email. And then when, when they do that, that comes, that email comes to me, that posting comes to me. Okay. And then I reach out with, hi, I got your short application. You're in, it's really it could just be an interest. You know, I got your interest in our program. What more would you like? And that's an email. What more would you like to, to know? And um, if you want to have a conversation, let's Skype. So okay. I invite them to Skype with me. Um, and it doesn't matter where they are. You know, I really just, we don't, we don't have to meet in person unless they're going to the University of Pittsburgh and they want, or somewhere in Pittsburgh where I am, they could come and meet me. And I have met some people from Pittsburgh in my office. Okay. But typically it's let's Skype, let's have a short Skype call. I'd like to answer any of your questions you may have and um, let's go from there. So that's usually our first initiative. Okay. So if I meet them at a career fair or, or a service fair, someplace like that, um, then I will say, hey, you know, get on our application page and send me your resume and I'll reach out to you and we'll go from there. Now, during that brief kind of conversation or introduction, is there anything that students should say or maybe should avoid saying or things that you look for? Well, I I would think that if they're interested in doing a year of service, that they would uh, ask questions like, well, what types of services do you have? Um, You know, what does the year look like? You know, because living in community is part of our our four pillars. I talk about community, living, service, spirituality. You know, person that does have a faith and is interested in developing that faith, uh, their their faith experience, um, and living simply. You know, really kind of shedding a lot of their desires, personal, you know, materialistic desires, to kind of live in a in a simple way. Um, and I usually tell them. You know, we live, there's a house that we rent in 10, 20 minutes from the city. And, you know, we want them to take public transportation to their service sites because we want them to get the feel of the common person. Um, So, you know, we, I I go, whatever their general information is, and they could get general information on the website, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I'd like to see them. You know, who are you? Let me look at your face. Let me, let me try to get some genuineness from you, you know, who you are, what you really want, what you desire. Um, but really, I'm looking for a person that wants this, you know, that, yeah. that it's thought about it before, you know, knows someone. Actually, I have a young woman from IUP that's coming this year. Oh, great. To our program. So, um, yeah, yeah. And I have a, you know, have my a brother and a lot of uh, nieces and nephews that went to IUP So I like coming there to the campus because it feels like I'm coming home. We appreciate that. Um, Pat, do you mind speaking on any opportunities that are currently available for our alumni or soon to be alumni um, or even any current students? Yes. Well, you have, you know, the year we don't do like internships um, and it's not like part time. The commitment is really 11 months. Okay. So we start at the end of August and we go to the following July. And it's really, you know, full time. You cannot work during that time because we identify a nonprofit. We help you identify a nonprofit for you to serve. You could work with the homeless. 
We get a lot of pre-med students who are interested in nursing students or psych majors who work for hospitals, um, work with the homeless, go on the streets. There's a lot of social service work, um, identifying the needs of, you know, just families that are in need. Uh, we work in food pantries. We work with veterans. We work with, um, you know, mothers and, and babies. Um, you know, we just, we work with the disabled. I mean, we just, you know, anything that you can think of, you know, we work in schools, we do tutoring, we work in childcare, uh, you know, we just, you know, in, people come to us with all kinds of majors. You know, we, you can have an accounting major and want to do this. You could have, you know, a major in IT. I had a young woman this year from Texas. She was an IT major, you know. She worked at Catholic Charities and she worked in their, you know, their walk-in center. And so she helped anyone who came in and helped help them identify some of the needs that they might have, whether it's clothing or food or, you know, whatever. So, I mean, your background, it doesn't necessarily have to be social service oriented. And, you know, with, this is unprecedented what we're going through. So I know a lot of grads, students that are either graduating or alumni, you know, students that are in their, you know, finishing their grad school or just looking into the workforce. It's difficult right now to find anything. Um, so this might be an option mm -hmm. to do a year of service because we're going to place you and you're going to get real world experience for a year in a nonprofit. And these are professional people. Um, and you're, you're going to have, you're going to gain a lot of transferable skills, mm -hmm. working with people. You're going to learn so much doing that. Uh, we're going to provide all the things you need, your housing, food, transportation. You're going to get a personal stipend every month. You can't work, but you will serve. We say serve instead of work. You're not going to work for money. You can't go to school while you're doing this. But you're, you know, but you're going to have a year of, you know, be, you're going to be just complete, um, you know, dedication to this service part of you that could change, typically change your life. So. Yeah. We had a question come in, Pat, and I think you answered this, but just to confirm, so all the positions within the organization are 11 months. There's not really any more short-term opportunities, correct? Um, not really. I mean, if there's someone wants to come in for six months, it's possible. Okay. Um, we start at the end of August. We've had like med pre-med students that have had to leave like in March. Okay. And so they would do a six, seven months and then, you know, they would have to leave, which is fine. And we would know, we would let the, the nonprofit partner know that the person is coming in for this period of time. Um, we do a large orientation at, at the, the last week of August. So it's a great time to really start for us. Okay. We, we have had students that have come in in January. Um, so that's another option as well. Cause I know that there were, there was another young woman um, who wanted to come in in January and I told her to reach out to me. So. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Um, so I guess one more question and then we had another question pop up, but this one is what is one piece of information that you would like to leave students with who are viewing this um, as we kind of wrap up our session here today? Uh, you know, we all want to make a difference in the world. We all want to be a difference in the world. And, you know, we can. Here's an opportunity to do that. Uh, we're sort of giving it to you on a platter that you can be the change that you want to see in the world. And I know young adults, I remember being 21. And, you know, I, I was very idealistic and I really was very passionate about the world and the things going on around me. And I wanted to, I wanted to make a difference. And this is an opportunity to, to do that in very, very many ways. And the thing is, you know, people come, young adults come in, they want to make, make a difference. The thing is, the difference is made in them. You know, they're, they're, going to, they're going to change. You know, you're going to look at the world, the world differently. You're going to look at that homeless guy who's asking for a buck on the street differently. Um, you're going to look at that, you know, that old woman who's riding a wheelchair across the street a little differently. You're going to look at the person in the grocery store that's acting kind of strange a little differently. 
So you're going to look at, you know, you're going to look at the world and the people around you that don't look like you, that don't act like you, but you're going to look at them as our brothers and sisters. That's fantastic. Um, just one final question, Pat. The, um, if you could touch upon how COVID-19, so what we're dealing with right now within, you know, the current um, global pandemic, has any, had there, have there been any social distancing directives and guidelines that have affected how current participants in the program are volunteering? Yes, great question. <clears throat> the first thing that I did with my volunteers this year is I met with them when this came out and I said, do you want to go home? Because I thought, well, you know, they're frightened and like we all were, um, and I wanted to give them the opportunity if they wanted to go home to family. And I said, think about it. And they all decided to stay. And I said, well, you know, let's make sure that your service sites can utilize you during this period. Uh, because, you know, a big part of your year is serving. Um, and it was a yes. All of their service sites are able to utilize them. I have two, one in a daycare, and she's creating... She's creating lesson plans from home. Mm -hmm. And I have another one working in a school and he does a lot of tutoring and he's doing creating things from, from home as well okay. for the children for their, well, he works in a middle school. Um, I have a woman who's working in um, homeless shelters and she's going, she's the only one actually going out three days a week. Um, and she's doing a lot of data collection and she's doing a lot of social services on the phone. Okay. So they have all adapted. You know, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. And my role as their program director, the, the bar has been raised because I am responsible for their well-being. And now with this, it's it's even more. The bar is raised even higher because I am very concerned about their health and their well-being. Um, and so I am in touch with them daily. <laughs> without bugging them, just to make sure that they know I'm here, yeah. that if they need anything, I provided masks for them, gloves for them. So when they do go out shopping or whatever, that they are, you know, we talked about, you know, they're young adults and they get it. Yeah. But I did also recommend that they watch the news at least once a day. And I said, that's important that you watch the global news once a day so you get a feel for what's going on in the world, what's going on in our country, and what's going on in Pennsylvania. I said, because they don't typically do that. I remember being 21 and I was, you know, didn't want to see that. But I said, I do want you to do that. So you have a sense of the breadth of this, of this disease and, the, you know, just what havoc it's creating in our world. Yeah. In our country. So those are some of the things that, that, and, you know, I'm very proud of them for staying. Um, and they have all chosen to stay for different reasons, but, you know, they, I have one woman from Seattle, Washington. Well, she's not going to travel. You know, I have another one from Chicago and one from, you know, Texas. Now, they don't want to travel home, number one. And they, they also want to stay, they want to stay committed to their nonprofits and the people they serve. That's fantastic. Well, Pat, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak this afternoon about um, your organization and the different opportunities and what it would be like um, to work there. Um, we really appreciate you joining us. Um, and I hope anyone that's watching this um, enjoys what Pat has to say.